Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gaming Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guide series today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new trial released in patch 6.2 for Endwalker, Storm's Crown. Now, the damage throughout this trial is going to be quite large, so healers beware. But she'll start the fight off with just a few auto attacks on the tank and then do a void arrow 4. This is going to do massive party wide damage. She'll then go to the middle and do a Savage Barbary. This is going to do a line AoE in the area that she has televised, followed by a circular AoE at the other televised location. Afterwards, she'll then do Hair Raise, where she'll charge to the sword that she just threw, and then do a large cone AoE from it. Void Arrow 3 is going to be the double tank buster where the tanks will want to stack together to minimize the damage. She'll then move back to the middle and do Savage Barbary again, which will do a circular AoE around her this time, followed by throwing the sword at the other televised location that she'll just want to move away from, before she'll then charge to it once again and do another hair raid. After this one, she'll do another Void Arrow 4. When she goes to the center of the platform and casts Tinging Tangles, this is going to put everyone in a small circular AoE. You can't move out of the AoE or you'll be pulled back to the center. You are going to move slowly while in here. So you'll need to already be aware of the AoEs and start to avoid them as soon as they happen. The first one will be directly on the hair location, so you'll want to move to either the left or right. And then after that AoE goes off, you'll move back into the center of the circle. After the two AoEs happen, she'll follow up with a group up mechanic that does a considerable amount of damage. So you'll want to make sure everyone is grouping up to split this, followed by another Savage Barbary. So this one again, you'll move into her to avoid the donut AoE, and then be on the opposite side of where she's televising that she's going to throw her sword. You'll have a bit more of a time after this one to move next to the sword before she casts Hair Raid, but it's best to just move right away anyway so you're not caught out. This one will be followed up with circular AoEs on multiple party members, so you'll just want to spread out to avoid overlapping these. And then she'll follow up with a Void Arrow 4 once again. Void Arrow 3 is going to be the double tank buster where the tanks will want to stack together to minimize the damage. She'll then go back to the middle of the platform and cast another Teasing Tangles. Again, move to either the left or right to avoid the first AoE. And then back into the center to avoid the second one. This time she'll cast Void Arrow, which is going to do circular AoEs under every party member. So melee should move either to the left or right of their circle so that they can move to the opposite side whenever the AoE begins to happen so they can still stay within range. Curling Iron is just going to be the phase transition that she'll be able to have a little bit of recovery time before phase 2 starts. Phase 2 begins with a massive amount of AoE damage, in the, so you'll want to group in the center of the platform and heal up afterwards. It's a good time to use any damage reductions that you have also. It is not worth burning the tank limit break though, so you go ahead and save that.
Right after she lands on that platform, she'll begin to target different party members and do line AoEs at them, while also damaging them. So you'll need to heal up quickly and avoid standing in these line AoEs. Afterwards, she'll do curved AoEs that will go from the center of the platform outward. Once this occurs, then the adds that are on the outside of the platform will each do line AoEs that you can actually move into the center of the platform to avoid both sets very easily. Then she'll follow this up again with more curved AoEs as the adds go back to her in the center with a group up mechanic and a AoE mechanic. So the person that has the crystal on top of their head will want to separate from the rest of the group while the rest of the group groups to split the AoE. She'll then do a tank buster on both tanks. So make sure that you're splitting outside of the group afterwards and then do the knuckle drum, which will do a large amount of party wide damage. This will be her transition between different abilities in this phase. Next will be a proximity AoE on one of the tanks, followed with a group up mechanic. While this is happening, she'll also send out small green AoEs that if you run into them will knock you into the air. And then move in between the donut and circular AoEs as they explode while also avoiding the small green AoEs. She'll then do another knuckle drum transitioning back into the first part where she'll repeat the line AoEs while the line AoEs are going on she'll also summon circular AoEs onto the platform so you'll need to be moving around the platform a lot to avoid these and she'll do another hair tease, this time doing a circular and donut AoE, followed by a knockback from a proximity on the platform. You'll want to get as close to the knockback as possible while still staying inside of your circle. She'll then do a tank buster on both tanks. She'll then do another knuckle press. So then repeat the line AoE and circular AoE phase while also doing a knockback mechanic from the center of the platform. Before doing the hair tease and putting everyone in the circles again. This time she will do knuckle drum in the center of the platform while also sending out the green circular AoEs. Once knuckle drum is done, then she will do a circular AoE in the center of the platform followed by a donut AoE. So since you are slow due to the hair, you'll need to be moving in between these quickly. At this time, the fight will begin to repeat the mechanics that you have previously seen. She'll then follow up with another knuckle drum before doing more line AoEs. Followed by the curved AoEs that will go to the outsides of the platform, summoning the additional adds. You can then again move into the middle to completely avoid these line AoEs from the adds. Before these curved AoEs will go back to the center of the platform whenever the group up mechanic will happen along with one party member having the crystal that will need to move out. Follow this up with the tank buster on both tanks and another knuckle press. You'll then have the proximity AoE and group up mechanic. After this, she'll do the green circles from the center of the platform, while also doing the circular AoE and donut AoE, along with circle AoEs on several party members. So you'll need to spread out accordingly while moving in between the circle and donut AoEs. She'll follow this up with another knuckle drum in the center of the platform. before going back into her line A. And this should be it for Storm's Crown. I hope this helped everyone out. If it did, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.